Hello, N4H and H here. I want to show you something else um, <clears throat> on the IC7300 related to CW. And then I'm going to shoot some videos over on the sideband uh, side. But um, let me, uh, I want to show you something that I didn't cover in that video I did yesterday where I kind of did the shootout. Um, one of the things I like to do to my rigs is to go in and I'm going to, I'm going to see if I'm on it here. Go to the menu and I'm going to go to set. Tone control, receive, CW. And see there, I've got a bandwidth of between 500 and 700 hertz. In other words, what I'm telling the radio's uh, audio circuit is, don't pass any frequency below 500 or above 700. You can press the multi knob and you can see where you can go in here and set these. I've got my side tone set at 600 hertz, so I'm allowing the audio circuit to pass plus 100 and minus 100 hertz. So I just wanted you to see that. Um, I do a similar thing over on the, uh, that's your high pass, low pass filter, by the way, is what it's officially called. And I've, I've got a similar thing over here on the, um, that I do on the 891 that you saw in the video last night. And I do it with my 5000. Now the Yesu, let me switch over to it. The Yesu calls it CW low cut frequency, CW low cut slope. It has the, you can adjust the slope. Um, and then you got the high cut frequency and the low cut. Now the Yesu allows you to do it in 50 hertz increments. So let me press the multi knob there and I'll show you. So I could do the 500, but it will allow me to do uh, 550 and then 18 dB per octave of slope or six. Six is going to be a easy slope down. I wanted more like a brick wall, so I'm doing 18. And then there's this, the high cut set at 700, and that's the lowest you can go anyway. And again, an 18 dB cut. So that's how you do it on the uh, FT891. Uh, but again, on the uh, IC7300, go into your menu, set, tone control, receive. You can tailor it for sideband AM and FM as well, but they're... There's for, uh, for CW, high pass, low pass. Now, when you get in there and you want to make the adjustment, you just press the multi knob and there's your up and down. All right, just wanted you to see that. And um, one other little uh, thing I want to show you here, it's a trick that I've used on the Yesu radios um, and I've shot videos about this. Let me, uh, let me let you hear what this guy would sound like with no help. Okay, so there is... The only thing helping right now is I've got the narrow option selected, which means it's using a 500 hertz width for the, for the filter. All right, now narrow the width to 100. Digital noise reduction at nine. APF. And now, here's the other little trick. Manual notch. See what that did? See, my side tone currently is set at 600 hertz. So I'm using the manual notch. If, remember, this filter has a slope on the high side and the low side, it's a shame we don't have dual notch filters, right? So what I'm doing is I'm using the notch filter to knock down that uh, filter ripple, the ring, ringing sound you get from the sharp slope of these uh, tight filters like this. And so, you know, I've shot videos about the, the Chebyshev and the uh, Butterworth uh, filter curves. Well, you can do the same thing on the ICOM. Let me let you hear what we got now. So, notch, APF. Width at 100. I could go to 50. Yeah, either way. Now I'm gonna switch over to the ICOM. And, um, okay, so I'll open the filter up a little bit. Of course, that's a terrible way to operate there. Tighten it up even more. 
and then filter three. I'm gonna long press that so you can see how I've got filter three set up. Then width is 50, shifting by 25, because the icon works a little bit different. The, it's twin, uh, p twin pass band tuning. But that is the setting that I have found to, to yield the most of the signal and the least of the background noise. All right, you can, and you can see there the filter, is, the filter itself is at 200, and then we're digitally dialing it down. Now, I wanna show you the notch. So I'm gonna get out of this, long press. Long press the notch, and you'll go into the notch on this one. See position? Now watch this. When I get to, it doesn't give you a readout, but I must be at 600 hertz because I just knocked him out of there. And there's Joel, KC4WZB, the owner of the radio. You guys remember I told you Joel loaned me this one so I could shoot these videos. So you can do the same notch trick here with the IC7300. And, uh, you know, pretty good. Listen to what it's done. Now, if I turn off the notch, hear the extra filter ring. Hear that ringing? It's annoying, right? But it's, it's caused because of the steep slope of these uh, filters because we're trying to carve out only the area of the spectrum we want to hear. So now, just long press the notch button and you essentially want to adjust it until you can hear the signal but knock that ringing down. Now you can do it on either side. Watch this. See here I'm affecting the, the, the top side, if you will, of my filter. Like I said, it, it's, it's a shame we don't have dual notch. Um, but what I'm doing is at least minimizing the filter ring by using the notch filter to knock down one, one or the other side of it, okay? And back over to the 891. Put it on a 50 since I've got the other one on 50. Yeah, he may be finished sending. Um, and by the way, I did check the reference oscillators against WWV and both radios are tracking uh, together. Uh, dead on frequency, so that tells me that see the blue light letting me know that my side tone's right. That If my radio's right with WWV, and I press the zero in button, or on the ICOM, it's the auto tune button, and it says 14.057.99, then he's actually 10 hertz off frequency. Again, no big deal, especially uh, for sideband, but even on CW, 10 hertz is not gonna be a big deal. Okay, so there he is on the 891. Notice, I, I, and I don't have IPO turned on, but he's a very weak signal. Imagine, that you can take a signal that weak and make it sound that good. And again, here, same thing over here on the um, on the ICOM. Okay, now I'll go back over to hear, hear the background noise in the receiver. Just a little, it's very minimized. And here it is from the uh, Yesu. So, you know, they're on par with one another. It, it may be the in, just the internal speaker difference, but I think the Yesu's internal speaker sounds a little better. It's a matter of personal preference. They're both pretty good. I think one thing on the Yesu that makes it pop out is this. APF. But 
like I've like I've told you in my other videos, there is no one feature. It's it's a collection, and you you combine them, you use them together to achieve your uh, your goal. Now I had a request from Chuck, and uh, Chuck's one of my Patreons, and thank you, Chuck. He wanted me to uh, put the uh, the five thousand into the mix. Um, but that's going to take a cable change, so I'm going to do that right quick, and then I'll uh, I'll come back with a. I tell you what, I'll shoot a separate video, uh, maybe comparing uh, these two to the 5000. I've got to work out a switching arrangement, but I do appreciate Chuck uh, requesting that, and um, I can tell you though, my experience with the 5000, it's it's in another league, okay. But hey, hey, thanks uh, to my Patreons, people like Chuck, for helping me uh, keep the channel going. And um, um, we'll turn it down. And uh, and so I'd appreciate anyone else who wants to participate in the Patreon program. It's www.patreon.com slash N4HNH. And of course, uh, please subscribe. That, uh, that helps uh, get us some kudos with YouTube. All right, thanks a lot for watching, and 73 for now, and I'll come back with a video about the 5,000 in a later uh, time. This is N4H&H, over and out.